Hello everyone, Colin Kinnett here for Woodwork Web and today we have a guest. Hi, I'm Jen from Cookies, Cupcakes and Cardio.com and I have a baking tutorial channel on YouTube. And Jen is here because she would like me to make her a pastry board which is very much like a cutting board but Jen can you tell me what kind of detail you're looking for in this? So what we want is basically something to cover up a really drab and boring countertop that we use to display our materials and to show you how to do techniques and we love the look of all of your wood products. Okay now how big do you need this to be? What sort of size? It's going to be really big like we're thinking about 47, 46, 47 inches and about 27 inches wide. Okay and are you looking for something with a breadboard end on it? What's a breadboard end? Well let's have a quick look at that. So a, a cutting board or a big pastry board just basically a big board um, maybe three quarters of an inch or a little bit thicker and it will be made of strips like this but what we like to do with big boards like this to give a little bit more stability is to put a board down the end like that and we fit it in with a, a special little joint so that it helps to keep the whole board from warping and bending. So that's kind of like the one you already made me. Yeah that's yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. And we can make this of the same wood as this or we could make this with a contrasting wood. So this could be dark for example and these could be light. Okay cool. So do you have a choice on that or a preference? Um, what about one side one color and then we flip the board over and the other side another color? We could do that. We, okay. could, uh, we could dye or stain the back of it a different color. So okay. sure good. Okay. Okay we'll get so started. Can you do that for me? We can. <laughs> okay great. <laughs> now in preparing the wood for this board I have a number of boards that are eight over eight feet long and I'm going to be cutting them at about 52 inches long and I'm just going to rough cut them right now always make sure when you're using the sliding miter that you're using good eye protection and good hearing protection Now I have nine pieces of board that I need to run through the jointer so I'm going to make sure one side is flat and when that side is flat I'm going to make one of the edges flat and then we'll go over to the table saw and cut them to width. Now I've jointed all this wood on two edges. Now I'm going to cut it on the table saw and I'm going to cut it all to width. And I've already set, I've already inserted the table saw blade, a ripping blade in here, and I've set the teeth to about a half tooth above the material.
Well, we've taken all our boards, we've jointed them, we've now cut them to size. Now the next thing we need to do is plane them to thickness, and that's what we're going to do now. Well, we've planed all our boards now. Now we're going to come to the part where we're going to glue them together. But I'm going to do something a little bit differently rather than gluing them together with just glue. I'm going to be using some dowels and I have some uh, doweling machine here that I'm going to be drilling some little holes in and we'll put dowels in each board like this and then the subsequent board will fit into that. What, what, what that will do is that will make our boards align almost perfectly uh, so that we don't have to waver when we're putting them together. So the way this rig works is I have to build a little bit of a platform off the, the top of the workbench and we just, I've already marked all of the lines on here, very light lines on all of the boards and we're just going to go through and start drilling holes. Now I've drilled all the holes and what I'm doing right now is a dry fit because I want to make sure that every hole that we're putting on here is going to align. So I'm checking each board individually. It takes a little bit longer to do but when you, the next step is to do a glue up and I don't want to have anything going wrong in the glue up. And you'll, you can see how what a perfect job that that does. Those boards just line up just amazingly well. We're ready to do the glue ups now. All of the dry fit went together and I'm going to be putting glue on both sides of our boards and I want a, a real good squeeze out of glue because I don't want any voids uh, and that's uh, one of the things that you want to make sure of when you're doing glue ups. Now you'll also notice that I only used one dowel. I drilled two holes but only used one dowel and that's because we don't really need two dowels to align these boards up. Okay well we've got all the glue in and now we're just tightening clamps top and bottom and we need to make sure that we keep this as as flat as we can on here. And well we've let the giant pastry board sit overnight here and it's nice and dry now so we can take the clamps off and have a quick look at it and it's looking uh, it's looking real good still have to uh, scrape some spots here now we've sanded down the tops of the boards here and what I need to do now is trim off these irregular sides but I can't put this on my sliding miter uh, or my table saw just yet so what I'm going to do I've installed in my circular saw a nice fine 40 tooth blade and I've reset 
the blade height so that it's just below the material and we'll cut off one end with that circular saw. Now, uh, to make the tongue, to make the breadboard end on that pastry board, I'm going to use the tongue and groove set on the router. And you can see that I have the tongue bit already installed. This will be the groove bit. And it's already set up. I just need to run the test strip. Now I've installed the groove bit and the way we test the height of it is by running the tongue up against it and when the tongue, when it cuts on both sides so that there's just a little bit of flaring of material, that's when the bit is set correctly. So let's just check that. And there you can see there's too much material, so that bit has to come up a little bit. And there you can see there's flaring on both sides now. I need to put a bit of a round over on the edge. This side, we're going to use an amber die, and we're going to die just this side of this board. There's our finished cutting board with the one side dyed. Now it's still wet, but we'll let it dry and then we're going to, going to come back. Well, our aniline dye is dry and what we're going to do now is stain this, or we're going to finish this rather, and for this part of the uh, finishing, I'm going to use a tongue oil, just a pure tongue oil, and we'll give it uh, probably a couple of coats of tongue oil.
we finally finished our pastry board and this is what it looks like. Now we've stained the other side, we'll show you that in a minute. Now I've called Jen and she's on her way over to have a look at this. Before she gets here, I wanted to go over. You know, we could have done this out of plywood, but of course it's difficult to do breadboard ends when you're working with plywood. And we didn't, we couldn't find plywood that had the look of this. So um, this board is mostly going to be used as a background piece and she's going to be using it on her uh, on her baking channel so we're going to get a chance to see that and we'll put a link to that when we uh, after we post this now she's on her way over here and I just heard her car in the driveway and I've told her to come right in the workshop and she hasn't seen this yet so this is going to be the first time she sees this here she is hi Jan come on right in the workshop there's, hi Colin there's it your, looks absolutely amazing it's beautiful now we finished it with tongue oil. Uh, I know you're mostly using it as a, as a background, but it right. is food safe. So, oh, great. And you also wanted us to do the back a different colored stain. Yep. And we've done that. So that's the back if you oh, want to use a darker stain. Beautiful. And I'm so excited. Our videos are going to look amazing. Well, I've told everybody that we're going to put a link to your to your channel so they can actually go over and, and see this. And all over this. Yeah, it's absolutely this, beautiful. Thank see you this so being much, used. So, yeah. So that concludes our video on making a pastry board. We'll have all the links at the end of this video. Don't forget to subscribe to Woodwork Web and to Cookies, Cupcakes, and Cardio. I'm Colin Kanat. And I'm Jen. 